Welcome back, everybody. We are here today on our Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. This is episode 238 to find the three big takeaways from today's show, as well as links back to all the resources and references from today's show. Head on over to ihp.coach slash 238. Let's get started today on how to reduce your overhead costs first. Why this matters so much is that when I look at the way that you're able to build a health coaching or in general a business today, it is radically different than it was even 10 years ago because the ability to be able to see clients virtually, it just didn't exist to the same level back in 2013 or so. Now, I was doing it over Skype around 2011, 2010, you know, right around there, so there's no doubt that you could do it. But the same buy-in, the same ability for clients to want to do that, it wasn't there. It was only like, well, I want to work with this person, but I don't want to travel from, let's say they were in Chicago or California. They didn't want to come to Boston. So we did a call over Skype. There wasn't the bandwidth. You couldn't get video to work as well. The file sharing was slow and clunky, not like it is today. So back in the day, and I would say even the mindset of most people, most business owners is to say, okay... I need to open up my own shop. And I'm putting that in ear quotes. All a shop means is basically your office, right? As they they say, hang your shingle. It it probably has to do somewhere with like the name of your business, right? The type of your business. But if you think about it, okay, what are you renting an office for? You know, you're renting an office to see people in person. Okay, so think about that. Well, what's going to cost you? I don't know. Maybe in like a major city, if it's just your office, not a shared office, just your office, maybe somewhere like fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars. You know, not for a big place, but for a waiting room and for an office or two in the back. You know, that's I don't know. At least in in Boston, that would be on the very low end. I I obviously paid much more than that for my wellness center, but you know, you need a space. But right off the bat, think about that. That means then you are forcing people to come to see you in person rather than virtually. But again, let's say okay, no problem. You can still see people virtually but you're in your office, which costs you what? Overhead, your rent, right? Okay, so let's just say your rent is, let's just put it out there, it's $2,000 a month. Okay, so your rent, let's say it's $2,000 a month. That includes your building insurance. They call it triple net. Uh, It's going to include your uh, utilities, your water, all that good stuff. All right. So let's just say it's $2,000 all in. Maybe it's $1,500 and then another $500 for all your utilities and and all those triple net expenses. All right. So then after that, you've got some type of typically fancy software with your front desk person. Uh, They might be running MindBody or or something like that. That's what we used to use back in uh, my functional medicine center. After that, you're having a front desk person. You might have um, two part-time people. Maybe they're both fifteen hundred a month. Maybe it's three thousand uh, dollars total because you have them coming in like four days a week for you know part-time work. And that doesn't include all your payroll expenses and everything else that that goes along with having a having a front desk person. Okay, then you need a little bit of build out. Let's not say you're doing a lot of build out, but you did a little bit of painting, you did a little bit of you know bathroom work, you did a little bit you know in your overall office. It's probably like minimum five to ten thousand dollars. That's just for like cosmetics, like really small stuff. So when you look at that, you say, okay, I'm getting my first office. I'm putting a little bit money into build out. I'm gonna have a front desk person there. You know, in be so that when people come in, they can obviously walk into your office when you're an appointment in the back. Okay, so when we look at that, really, what are we looking at? We're looking at a minimum of fifteen thousand dollars just to get started with a new business. Like that's the minimum. That's the overhead. And you might say, well, that's not that bad to start a business. And you know what? It's not. Like that's the least amount really that you can do it. I've never started a business for that little money. I haven't. Not a, not an offline business where you could actually come to see uh, me in person. Probably the least about, if I'm being really honest with you, I think it was around fifty five to 70,000. It was someone within that, somewhere within that range. And that was a huge stretch for me. That was putting everything on credit cards. There's no way I had that money when I was first starting out 
So just letting you know that. And then, you know, if you build out a whole wellness center, well, that that's, you know, far more expensive. But let's look at that. Okay, that's the starting point for your overhead. And if you don't have any clients and this is a new business for you, do you want to be taking that on? And the question is really becomes this, is that how quickly could you pay that back? And then is it ongoing? So I like to keep business no stress. I like to really make it about the work that I'm doing, the people that I'm helping, and in my business now, today also the people that I'm employing so that they have great work, that they enjoy what they're doing, and we're helping more and more people. So it's exponential, right? It's exponential growth in terms of um, hopefully good paying jobs, working with good people, and building an overall great business. So if we look at that, though, you have to think to yourself, how are you going to be making $10,000 a month? You know, like that, like that's the question yourself, because if you are, okay, well then maybe $15,000 isn't that bad of an investment. Maybe you got a small business loan from your bank or the banks would never lend to me. I don't know why. It's not like I had good credit, but the funny thing is it's not as easy as people think to get a loan. I, I just, I don't know. It's never been my experience to be able to get one of the small business loans. Um, you know, six months later, they're like, well, we still need this documentation and that. I'm just like, you know, it's been six months. Um, but anyway, that's just been more of my experience. You could certainly look at it, but you have to have a really good idea and plan as to why you would spend fifteen to twenty to fifty thousand dollars of a build out with the space, and then ongoing because it's not just that. Like, okay, it's fifteen thousand dollars maybe to get started, you know, in the first month or so. But what about every month? You know, every month you might have four to five thousand dollars of overhead, or, or let's just say four thousand. No, actually, it would be more than that, right? You've got your rent, and then you've got someone at working at your front desk. You're looking at five six thousand dollars minimum, maybe of your overhead each month. Okay, so that comes off your top line. So if you're making $6,000 a month, it's just going to pay for your space, right? Like, look at, think about that. So you're making $6,000 a month. Let's say you're charging $200 per client, right? For a month's worth of services. All right, well, let's just divide that by 6,000. What's it gonna be, about 30 clients? I think it's somewhere around there, right? So 30 times um, 200 should be 6,000, and it is. Okay, so that's 30 appointments for the month. So let's, that's, Look at that. That's going to be about eight clients a week, right? So eight hours a week. Okay. Eight hours a week. Your first eight hours a week goes right to your overhead. So you might say, well, I'm just starting out. I don't have any clients. Okay. Well, now you need 30 hours a month, 30 clients a month just to pay for your overhead. So you kind of have to think about that. The reason why it always made sense for me to open up centers and, and locations is that I knew it wasn't going to just be me. So why this is important is because I could say, okay, my goal is to be able to work with my clients. My other goal is to be able to reach more people because I can't work with everybody. And so how many people would my other coach need to work with in order to me help me pay for the overhead. And so I might say, okay, well, if I'm paying them, whatever it might be, you know, a percentage of the over, uh, the session that I charge, how much then, how many sessions would they need to be doing to help to overpay, to pay for that overhead? So it's one way to look at it. And it's why it is something to be careful about because that monthly payment never goes away. And what are you really doing? Well, you're chasing that payment every single month. Meaning like, yeah, you can take a month off if you want. You can take a week off, but it just means that you now have more hours to pay for that overhead because your landlord still needs to get that monthly check. It is their space. They're renting you that out. Um, you don't own it. And then also your front desk person still needs to be compensated. So what I say to you is this. There are different ways of doing this, but the way in which it is simplest for you to be able to build your practice in anything other than like what has to be an in-person service, like a chiropractor doing adjustments, they really need to be in-person, right? You want to see your chiropractor if they're doing some type of active release therapy, Graston, they're doing um, some type of postural-based work, or they're doing adjustment, again, whatever it might be. Yeah, you need to be in person. There's just no doubt about that. So then the goal is, okay, well, you need to build your practice up and be busy, still trying to limit your overhead costs. Like that's the goal. The goal is that you want to keep those costs as low as possible because the truth is then you get to keep more income in your pocket. So the least, the, the less you pay in rent, 
The less you pay in your utilities, your you know triple net, if you don't have to pay triple net, all those things, well, the better because that money then goes back in your pocket, right? If you pay $1,000 less a month in rent, you just made $12,000 for the year, right? Because it's the opportunity cost. Like you can rent this place, you can rent this place. Now, some of them pay off, paying more money for rent. Like I wanted to rent inside of the city in, in Boston. It costs like five times the amount of money for rent in the city than outside of the city. But guess what? There's you know a half a million people inside of the city in, in Boston, Massachusetts may, that live there. Maybe there's a million people during work hours. Okay, so that meant I also had the opportunity to reach more people. For me, it worked out. I was willing to make that bet, but I had already been working in Boston. I had kind of built up a little bit of a clientele, so that was an easier transition. One thing to, to share with you as well. But for me, again, if I'm looking at a virtual practice, which is ultimately what I moved to in 2019, uh, is because we were doing so much work virtually anyway, is I said, you know, why don't I? Why don't I focus on the work rather than on the space itself? I love the space, don't get me wrong, but I love the work more. And so when I looked at that, I said, okay, I can get rid of my rent. Uh, now I still have an office. I've always, you know, loved having an office, but I mean, my office was like, 10% of the price of my you know, wellness center. So that was greatly decreased. I didn't need to pay the triple net. Um, I didn't have the front desk person and um, I didn't have to do any of the build out. Like, yeah, I do, I do a couple custom things for the office. Sure, but like very minor. And so what I did was I was able to essentially eliminate everything except a small monthly payment for my office. And now I work from home office. So that's a little bit different. Yes, I do have an office in Maine and all that. But um, again, that's neither here nor there. You can do fun stuff too, the more income you continue to make. Meaning I've been doing this for a long time. I've got great clients. I've got good business. And then you can start to do fun stuff. And like, if you want an office, well, then you get to, you know, you've earned that. You get to get that office. So what I share with you is this. With becoming a virtual health coach, or at least having that part to your practice, don't go crazy with creating costs for yourself. Social media, you need that. It's free, right? Um, your virtual business, you can use uh, software such as Iobowen. You can use Zoom. You can use Dropbox. These are fairly inexpensive in general. And then what I would also say is this. You know, you need a website. If you're going to invest in something, whether you have an in-person practice or not, you really do need a good website. I'm telling you right now, people judge your work by your website. They really do, uh, like without a doubt. If you're listening to this, even if you're not an IHP, well, you kind of have to be an IHP, but here's what I want you to do. Um, email support at IHP.coach. We'll share with you what we do to help um, get IHPs at least on the right track for their website. Really important. I just highly recommend that. And I recommend an online scheduler. An online scheduler, it might cost you $50 a month. It is worth it. It really is. Because people want to be able to book their appointment right at that moment in time, looking at their schedule. I went back and forth through email for many years with my front desk people. They would do it with clients. But now that there's online scheduling, it's just so much easier. So invest in that. There's a couple things you want to invest in. That's one of them. And then insurance. Just make sure you're insured. Whether you're a health coach, personal trainer, uh, chiropractor, acupuncture, whatever you are, just make sure you do have insurance. Maybe it's $50 a month. Maybe it's $100 a month. You just make sure you have to. It's just something that's the cost of doing business. Those are low cost. So you're looking at a couple hundred dollars a month versus a couple thousand or a few thousand or maybe even 5,000 or more per month with an in-person practice. So last thing on this is this, and I'll talk about maybe a shared practice in the future, but the truth is this. If you're looking for a lower stress, low cost way of getting started, try to develop some virtual component to your practice, begin to offer that online through social media, sending people to your website, which we have lots of podcasts on, getting them to set up a discovery call, a free consultation, and then moving them into becoming a virtual client, which again, then the software there is pretty much free. So hopefully this was helpful. I just want to share again, I've been doing this for quite some time. I want to share you any, any of the mistakes that I've made so that you don't need to make them. And I would love to hear anybody who has a practice in person, what are the pros? What are the cons? We always love hearing from you. Again, uh, head on over to ihp.coach slash 238 for all the takeaways and more. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the week.